Car wash owners and operators are always searching for ways to increase profitability without compromising the quality of the wash. In this second segment of our series, we'll show you how to deliver a cleaner car through smart use of chemistry. Stay tuned, the International Car Wash Association is taking you to the cleaning edge. Well, the first thing we do is we put on a pre-soak, and we're using K-nozzles to apply that. So we can get the front of the vehicle, K-nozzle kicks out on okay. an angular pattern, so we can get the front of the car, and then what we do is, we, after we can pass the mirror, we turn the front-facing K-nozzle pre-soaks off, and do the back-facing uh, pre-soak so, so, so essentially, you're getting total coverage here on this one That's arch. right. And we're trying to paint the entire car. Now down here in Dallas, uh, Ralph, will you use a heated pre-soak here and will this be a high or a low acidy type of, of uh, chemical that you'll put on here? First answer is yes, we heat up the chemistry. Okay. We found that if we heat the chemistry, it makes it more active. Okay. Um, depending if it's high or low is really going to depend on the soils in the area, but we do use both highs and lows in the wash process. Do you balance that on the length of the tunnel or, or the chain speed? How do you do that to make it get the best Break of, I guess they used to call it a break when, when uh, I started in the business. You had to break the soils first and then go into your car wash. How, how, yeah. how, do, you, how do you figure that out? Well, once we, what we do it is, is through trial and error. Okay. Actually, when we set a car wash up, we don't know what kind of soils that, that we're going to deal with in that area. So for the first 30 days, we're going to be trying, hey, do we go high first or low? Okay. And, and we, we play through it. We discover what works. Okay. And then we set the car wash up from that. Because we have the ability through multiple applications to put whatever kind of chemical we want, a high or a low. So honestly, all we do is, is uh, each particular car wash, we experiment to figure out what works best. When you set your, your car wash equipment up, have you found any, any particular formula that works best? I mean, here they seem to be starting with brushes as opposed to, you know, when I first started in the business, we had, you know, you'd go with a chemical application, then you'd go with a pretty aggressive either mitter or top brush. Have you found success Either way? What we found that works here for us is that we put the pre-soaks on the car and we go into the side wheel cleaning first. Okay. Because it's generally easier to clean the sides of the vehicle uh, and then let that pre-soak stay on the car on the top surfaces so that when it gets to the curtains it has more dwell time to work on the vehicle. So we have the first application. So we're going to go a little light because the wheels are kind of hot in, in Texas. Okay. So if we go with too strong of a chemical right out the bat, we could have some problems. So we go a little light in the concentration level on this one. Okay. Now as you're going a little further, and we're going to gain some dwell here, we're going to go a little bit more, we're going to go a little stronger and the possibility of a different, a, a high-low mixture, whatever we want to do. But generally speaking, we're going to go light, a little heavier, and then as you go in further, okay. almost down to where the, uh, the wheel high pressure apparatus is, you can see the third okay. uh, chemical. Seems like you have about 10 feet between the two, two applications. Is that about the, the number you like to use or is it just kind of facility specific? Facility specific based on conveyor line speed. Okay. Okay. So if, obviously if, I want, if we were at faster line speed here, I would have them further apart because we're trying to gain that certain amount of time that it's on the wheel before it gets to the next application. And every single car will get an application at all three points in the car wash? Uh, only if they buy wheel cleaning services. If they don't buy wheel cleaning services, then we might just put the first one on. Okay. And, and the other two they don't get, and of course the high pressure cleaning would not be part of Would not be part of the standard the car standard wash. package. And it looks like you got about 25 feet between the second and the third. And right, then... and really that one really, uh, Fred, is, is closer to the wheel high pressure apparatus and we're going to go a little And that's going to be your strong. hottest application yeah. there. So the relationship between here and there is not what we're focusing on. Mm -hmm. We're focusing on the third one, how close it is to the high pressure application. Okay. Ralph, do you have any problem you think with, with, you know, as you apply your chemical you have a lot of side wheels spinning here. Do you think you get a lot of rinse off yeah, with, we, with that? I mean, is that the purpose of going hotter, hotter and then hottest the, to the closest to your high pressure? Yeah, and, and in addition to that, Fred, what we've got is multiple applications. Behind us, you'll see there's another foaming tube right. to apply a pre-soak again. Okay. Uh, there's also a, a gray, I don't know if you can see that gray nozzle right there in the middle. 
Oh yeah, okay, okay sure. That sends out a fanned pattern to put pre-soak on the back of the car, and the one above your head is another fan pattern to do the front of the car. And okay. generally what we'll do in there is put the bug, uh, yep. the bug chemical in that one. And again, all these chemicals that you're applying here are heated, and is there any particular temperature you like, or do you vary depending on the chemical? We, in our particular locations that we get, we've been very fortunate. We have a, a cold and hot water single ball valve that we can use to be able to mix or however we need to on the water. Most places you've either got a hot water drop and a cold water drop and you've got to accept what your hot water heater is running at and your cold water is running at. This way if you have some variables where it's a little cooler but not 50, 40 degrees, you can mix the two and get to the heat you want to so that you've got the activity out of the product. Reducing the amount of money it costs for hot water, reducing the amount of money it costs for chemistry on the vehicle because you're integrating as much as you need to to make that surface clean better. So Ralph, we're about 25, 30 feet into the tunnel now and we're getting to the third appl applicator for your wheels. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on here? What we're doing here is we're going on the wheel with a little higher concentration level of the, of the chemical, a little hotter, so to speak. And the reason why is we're, we're down the tunnel a ways, the wheels are cooler now and we're close to where we're going to wheel blast the chemistry and the dirt off the wheel. Okay. So that's why we go a little hotter in the third one. We're at the third arch now here in the middle, in the middle of the tunnel. The you, had a, you, you had a pre-soak arch, then another pre-soak arch that got the back of the car. We're now at the third arch. You were explaining to me earlier that you don't put any chemistry on any of the, the wraparounds or, or, or side brushes. Could you explain your thinking as far as you know, why you're using three arches here to get your chemi chemistry on and, and, and what you do? Well, the reason we, what we do is we like to get the chemistry to the car surface. Because we feel that if we get the chemistry to the car surface, that's where the dirt is. We don't want to spray it on the equipment and have the equipment carry that to the car surface. We want to put it directly on the car surface. When you put it on a, a rotating unit, it's slinging it all over the place and you're not getting the efficiency of using just the right amount to the car surface. So we like to put all our pre-soaks directly on the car surface. And by the way, we don't use any soaps, we just use pre-soaks. What do you use to, to lubricate then your, your, for your side wheels? Are the pre-soaks applying enough lubricity and giving you enough you know, slippery you know, edging, so to speak, for, for the cars it's going through? I mean, Yeah, we don't have that problem because of the multiple applications. Okay. In addition, we have the reclaim water that has soap in it already, or, or pre-soaks. And that's how we get the, the lubricity we need. You know, as we were going through the tunnel, I, I was kind of interested. You're using a foam material here on, on, on this particular piece of equipment, which is a wraparound, and yet you have cloth on the other, on the other pieces coming through the tunnel. What, what was your thinking, or what, what are you trying to accomplish with, with kind of using a cloth foam use? Great question. What, what we did, the cloth, in my opinion, cleans better. It's a little bit more aggressive on the vehicle. So when I have fixed side wheels, either lower rocker panels or tall uh, panels, that are not getting in front of the car, they're mainly cleaning the sides of the vehicle, I'm going to use cloth. Okay. Now if I'm in the front of the car with a wraparound coming around the front and then all the way down the sides and across the back, I'm going to use something a little more gentle around the car like the foam. Okay, Ralph, we've moved past now the, the second set of mitters, and we're down here in the polishing area. So why don't you explain to me what we're doing here as we come, here's the tri-foam arch. Okay, once again now, what, what happens here is, this is a separation between reclaim towards the entrance, and now we're gonna pick up fresh water because we're gonna rinse, wax, and polish. We're gonna put triple foam on here, and you got two types, you can put a conditioner on or a true polish. We elect to put the true polish on because it aids in the drying of the vehicle and adds a little bit more protection. In addition, it's more free rinsing. Then as, as we move forward, you, the, the wheel cleaning apparatus is here. And what we're doing here is I give the owners the opportunity, they can either switch a valve and have these fresh water or they can have them reclaim whatever they choose. Um, we're clean, there's two levels if you notice. This one's yes, a little see lower that. than that one. That's so we get all the different wheel heights. And if you were to get wheel cleaning services, both of these would come on as the vehicle's going by. And in a standard wash, you would get one or none? None. None. 
Right, you're only getting these in wheel cleaning packs. Did you find, do you find or do your owners find any difference in using Reclaim to, to fresh in the, in the cleanability of the wheels? No, not really. Um, the only reason they choose Reclaim is sometimes they want to save some water costs. Okay. So this is the appropriate place to put it. We don't want to put Reclaim after it gets past the Reclaim part of the tunnel. We don't want to put Reclaim on the car on any part of the surface, but it's acceptable on wheels. Well, Ralph, we're finally here in the rinsing area, and frankly, I'm looking at a relatively short um, drip area, which seems odd to me, but why don't we go through the, what you do here. After you go through the um, drip area, we get to this great arch here that has nozzles, and it, has, it also includes a rain arch across the top. Tell me what goes on from here. This is a high-pressure rinse arch right here. Okay, so what we're gonna use this for is we wanna impact the car to try and get the foam out of the mirrors and things like that. Okay. So this is gonna come out, this is gonna come out every car to help rinse. All that pre-soak and everything else that we put on the Under car. pressure. Right. Uh, we're about 800 to 1,000 PSI. Okay. Okay. Now, as far as the rain arches, that's only gonna come on when we got triple. And it's just gonna assist in rinsing the triple off the vehicle. And that's under pressure also? Uh, yeah, just normal city water. Normal city water pressure. Right. So as we move down, now we get to a premium arch here. Tell me what's happening here. Right, on the premium arch, because it is a premium protectant that we're gonna apply to the car, I wanna use a different arch, I wanna use different colors. Uh, this one has a, a neon bar on it. Okay. And uh, I want to, the customer in the vehicle, that is, to, to understand that this is a premium product that's going on the car. Now, with this premium product, you need a rain bar after it to help get it off the vehicle. Okay. Otherwise, it doesn't perform as well. So that's why there's an additional rain arch. So that would only come on when this comes on. And this product is heated also? Uh, no, this is not heated. That is not? No, we have, we're not using any heated water in the application of any, any, of, the, any of the rinses. Okay. And then the last one, of course, which is this one, is your clear coat. Okay. So then we move down, we have yet one more arch here that, that's really interesting to me because I don't have this at any of my car watches. So could you explain to me what's going on here? What we have here is a spot free, and what, if you'll notice, we're, there's a, the arches are, this one is a little bit more room between this and, and the okay. last one. What we're trying to do is let the hard water come off the vehicle now, because we're going to put the RO, on, RO water on. And we have a dual manifold. We're going to face forward so that we can, the first manifold is going to come on and be able to rinse the front of the car. And then as the car goes by, we're going down the side of the vehicle. Okay. Now once the mirror of the vehicle passes this arch, we're going to turn the front-facing arch on, off, and turn the rear-facing arch on. And it's going to send out a pattern of water in a V like this. And what that allows us to do is, no matter where on a truck or a car or a very low a car like a vet, send that pattern of water up to make sure we get that spot-free water on the, on the mirror and in the mirror cup to rinse that out. Then as that vehicle goes by, those two things are coming out like this, and it crisscrosses and does the back of the vehicle. That's great. And I notice, I notice here, you, you must be doing that on the controller because you're not using any kind of floor-activated switch here. So this is all controller-activated. Right, we're using the, what's called the half car uh, on the controller. Okay. So the half, the front is the first part of the car, and then the controller knows the second half of the car is the rear. We'll turn this one off, turn that one on. Excellent. We'll see you next time on The Cleaning Edge.